Hi everyone, I'm Lexi Savides from CNET and I am here with the brand new Motorola Razr V3. The super thin flip phone that's getting a lot of hype. Wait, that's not a Razr. That's a Razr. Who said that? One of the big reasons we are so interested in the new Motorola Razr is because of nostalgia. So in this video, I wanted to see how far we have come in 16 years between the 2004 V3 and the 2020 Motorola Razr. Now, Motorola released a lot of different versions of the V3. The one that I have here is technically called the V3RE pretty much exactly the same as the original V3, except for a tiny difference in design on the front and an update to edge connectivity. The reason why I'm using it? Well, the original V3 I have just doesn't work anymore. So one of the big reasons why people love this phone was because it looked so different to everything else on the market. Sure, there was other phones that were cheaper, and that had better specs, but this really looked like it was from the future. No wonder Motorola ended up selling 130 million of them. So this is really what you're here for, is to see both of these phones side by side. And when they're closed, I am so surprised that the old and new Razer, they're very similar in terms of that height. You can put them side by side like this to see the thickness as well. There's not that much difference. Now at the time, the old Razer V3 was the slimmest phone in the world and you could easily fit it in a pocket. The new Razer is also very pocketable. It's just, I guess, a little bit more bulky just because it's a wider overall design. Stack them on top of each other too to see the difference there. Now, this original Razer V3 was so light. It was 95 grams or 3.35 ounces. The new Razer, well, it's significantly heavier. It is 205 grams or around 7.2 ounces. One of the most satisfying parts about using the old Razer was flicking it open and closed with one hand, especially when you're on a call, you can hang up really angrily. So satisfying. All right, so the new Motorola Razr, obviously being wider, it doesn't sit as comfortably in one hand for me with smaller hands. You can open it with two hands, it's probably easier to start with. Yes, you can open it with one hand like so. It just takes a little bit more muscle memory. However, closing it and snapping it shut, doable, but it just has a little bit more resistance, so it's not as satisfying for me. The big thing about the V3 that I personally loved was that etched metallic keyboard with that blue backlight. It just felt so satisfying to press the keys and use it. So you might be wondering, oh, I really miss that about the new Razer. Does it have something like that? Yes, it does. A little Easter egg for you. To find that old school retro Razer, go down into the settings menu, tap that little pencil button and go down until you find this retro Razer section. Bring it up. Press Retro Razor. Yeah. All right, let's look at the screens now. Obviously, huge difference here. 2.2 inch TFT screen on the V3 versus a 6.2 inch foldable OLED. I mean, the difference is just night and day here. I still have a lot of love for the old V3 screen. The resolution is 176 by 220. The new screen is a 21 by nine aspect ratio at 2142 by 876. So closing them up, obviously they both also have screens on the front. A big part of the original Razer was being able to see the time and your calls coming through. The new Razer really takes this one step further with the peak screen. You can see notifications, swipe down to get access to some of the Android settings, use Google Pay, all that good stuff. My personal favorite though is this little action. Twist and uh, the selfie camera turns on front facing. I like that a lot. So if you get one of these phones, you'll still have to carry around your iPod if you want to listen to music because one, it doesn't have much internal storage for music and two, there is no headphone jack. The more things change, the more they stay the same. But there was a version of the V3 called the V3i 
that was much more music focused that came out a little later in 2005. Now let's talk cameras. The camera on the original Razer V3 was only a VGA model at 480p, which is crazy considering how far we've come on the new Razer, which has a 16 megapixel camera at f1.7. And yeah, the photos from the original V3 do not look good at all. I mean, okay, the resolution is not great for starters. There were phones that had better cameras on the market back in 2004, but Honestly, even at the time, I remember looking at photos from the Razer and just going, they're just not very good. That being said, I'm still not a huge fan of the photos from the new Razer. They look fine, HDR is good and photos are sharp, but they just don't have the wow factor of some other phones with ultra wide angle lenses and really good night mode. One thing that I found really surprising about taking photos on both of these phones in 2020 was the screens are so hard to see in daylight. I give the V3 a pass because come on, it was 2004, that probably wasn't your first priority. But in 2020, not being able to see a screen in bright daylight, even with the brightness cranked up to the maximum, was quite annoying. <laughs> The old Razer actually outperforms the new Razer when it comes to battery. So on paper, it doesn't look like it. On paper, 680 milliampere hours compared to 2510 on the new Razer. But here is where it comes down to standby time and talk time. The old Razer could get you 280 hours of standby time and seven hours of talk time. The new Razer, on the other hand, will get you through the day depending on your usage, but you're gonna have to charge this one every night. Connecting to the network is totally different on both of these phones because standard size SIM card on the V3 and no SIM card at all on the new Razer because it's an eSIM. But one of the most satisfying parts for me, at least with the old Razer, was just popping out the battery like so and accessing the SIM if you needed to. And uh, trust me, you did have to do this a lot because in my memory at least, my V3 used to crash all the time. <sighs> Look how cool that is, old school sim. So big. The original Razer V3 was expensive at the time. In 2004, when it first went on sale, it started at 449 US dollars. So it was a real status symbol and something that only a select few could afford, even though it got cheaper over the years. With the new Razer, well, not much has changed. It's 1,500 US dollars and even more in overseas markets. So really, the question is, is the nostalgia worth it for you? And that is why I really like the Motorola Razer V3. What is this? Wow, this is big. And this, is that a screen? Wow. Netflix? You can put DVDs on this? What is a Facebook? Gmail? No. Oh, Yahoo, I know that. Yeah, that's good. There's a camera on this too. That looks good. That isn't pixelated and yuck. 